Okay, you've got the rider in yellow. All right, up and riding. Drive out of this wave, he's going to get an early lead. Nice roll off the outside, as you see, riders picking off these sets. They pressed the buzzer right at the right time too. All right, that was yellow. Kalani Latanzi, the current IBA, IBA Latin America outside, world champ. Hardy. Here we go, live action. Hardy on the outside, beautiful stall, spread legs. He's just looking for the pocket. Just pops a nice roll out of that. Again, there's not huge scores going down here at the moment, so riders are just going to be looking for, you know, just getting a foundation, getting two kind of normal scores, you know, your, your fivers and your fives and your sixes. And I think Hardy's just trying to get some points on the board with that one. All right, you've been looking at the surf uh, pretty much since you got here. What are the what are your conditions like as a competitor? Who you, I mean, you're looking at the at the water, a different perspective than most of us. So as a competitor, you're coming out soon. What do you see? Um, I guess I just look at the risks kind of thing, and I just think that um, you know that the risks are out there. That there's a lot of waves closing out, and there's not a lot of good waves. So it's going to come down to really, it's going to come down to who gets the best waves out there. Um, and I hate those kind of heats, to tell you the truth, because it's um, <laughs> a lot of luck involved, but yes. and a lot of patience. And when you've when you're in a contest like this, you're pretty raring to go, and, and it's hard to keep still and keep the patience. As you see, the rider in black on the outside, beautiful wave here, actually. All right, this is a Californian, Joe Grodson, bouncing his way around this section and finds it, and uh, he goes up to hit a lip that which is not is not there. So that's all she wrote for Joe Grodson on that lap. A lot of riders, a lot more riders, are starting to look left for for you know. Uh, the big big maneuvers but sometimes they're just doing that fizzling out nothing there for Joe Grodzin so it's it's bittersweet uh, you are now the current drop knee world champ 2012 you're going to be defending that world title but on the other note you may also get knocked out of the Grand Slam series seated position yeah well um Hang on, I'll just, I think we're just going to cut to a replay really quickly, but I'll answer that question in a second. You see, punching a nice roll through the lip. It's pretty heavy. And that's Kalani from Brazil. I actually had him in a contest not long ago, a couple of week, about a week ago in Venezuela. And um, he's a young, young Brazilian coming up through the ranks. Yeah, actually, Kalani, with this event, has claimed the 2011 IBA Latin America champion. So he's got, uh, he's got a little, you know, click on his uh, list. So Kalani, young and so ready to young. rock and roll. So we're going to see a lot of him for sure in the coming years. Yeah, he's a pretty cool dude too. We, we had a heat the other day and there wasn't much hassling going on. And, um, cool. And um, yeah, it's good to see the young guys from Brazil coming through the ranks and um, stamping their authority on the world tour. Nice. Okay, I know, I, don't, I know it's a bittersweet and it's going to be hard to talk about, but you are on the cusp of losing your seating on next <laughs> year's 2012 men's division yeah, so yeah, pretty much it comes down to these next two events so i need a good result yep. in one of them if not both of them so um yeah it's just a it's a matter of i don't know i'm reading a book at the moment an andre agassi book at the moment and, and it talks nice. about dealing with pressure and, and coming from the back and things like that and you know a lot of people have been there and a lot of people have got over it and but when you're sitting in the driver's seat and you're um and it's you in the in the position you know it gets pretty hot in the oven and what? um and you just gotta you, you just gotta keep keep relaxed and just as long as, as long as you genuinely haven't you know you, you you feel like you're still on top of your game and you, you I don't know I think you just got to still um you still got to stay focused on that because you can just turn around like with a click of your fingers in, in the last five seconds like yesterday I went from losing to winning yeah. and like there's such a fine line and so, fine margin in all these events and because everyone's so good it can go either way so you just can't give up and um and you know I, I'm I'm looking forward to the next couple of heats, and um, especially in these waves, and should be good. All right, looks like uh, Joe Grodzin dropping in, trying to put something together here. He only has a 1.0, 1.75 as his two waves. He's getting nice waves, though. He's getting ni nice waves, but they're not really forming up for Joe. And he finally is able to do maneuver, and not much there for Joe Grodzin. Yeah. Another low-scoring wave for Joe. 30 minutes remaining, tons of time. Yeah, the conditions are pretty hard out here. It's not like, um, probably looks a bit better at home sitting on the... Um, <laughs> on the computer watching, but it's actually, there's a lot of closeouts. There's, All right, so... There's so loops and, and you see Joe there, um, you know, he's he's struggling and he's and he's trying to make the most of it. But he's, he's a veteran competitor. He's been around for a long time. I remember when I first started competing, Joe was, you know, he was there. And it's good to see him here having a go. And, um, you know, it's good that the IBA gave him a wild card too because you've got to kind of, I reckon it's good to remember these guys and, you know, bring them back into the sport. It keeps them stoked. And, and I'm sure Joe, if Joe gets the right wave, he'll... Um, He'll give someone, he'll give everyone something worth watching. 
Well, he's not. He, he's. I mean, he's been coming to Puerto Rico. His, his actually his lady his lady is from Puerto Rico, so he's been spending a lot of time here. And uh, so this is uh, pretty much like his backyard now. Check this out, Kingy. We do have Shaggy downstairs with the winner of the last heat, PLC. Shaggy, where are you at, brother? Hey guys, I'm down here with Pierre. Congratulations on that last heat, Pierre. How oh, does uh, Rips feeling after that huge roll you did? Yeah, um, yeah, it hurts a lot. My back hurts a lot after that move. Um, well, I did the roll actually because um, in my first round um, I tried too much. I considered the first round as a kind of a show, I reckon, and um, so it was not working for me. I did two big backflips. I didn't make them. So when I got that round today, I was like. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I'm not, I, don't, I can't do mistakes anymore, so I just did a roll. And uh, yeah, the landing was heavy. Uh, it was so painful. I had to grab my ball with two hands to make sure I was going to land it. So I have a little bit of pain now, but after a good stretching tonight, it should be good. Yeah, you see a few little white stars when you're coming out there? <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit. No, could be worse, could be worse. And then you had a great backflip after that, so that was cool. Yeah, 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 and I got a good backup wave, so I'm pretty happy with the surf today, so... Let's see how it's going to be in the third round. Yeah, well, congratulations. Yeah, can you shout out to Portugal or France? Or? Yeah, uh, for sure. I'm seeing my family is watching now, so I just want to send a kiss to my mom, my sister, and my dad. And I know my family and friends who are watching right now, so hello to everyone. All right, well, thanks very much for that, Pierre. Back to you guys. All right, great job, Shaggy, and uh, great heat for PLC. Absolutely dominated that last heat with some big moves. And uh, looks like we still have some action here. Heat number three I believe in the second round of the three round leaderboard system so Kingy I thought you said you were gonna write a book and this was gonna be a chapter but you know what write a book brother <laughs> you got you got the history behind you and I, I, I guarantee there's a bunch of viewers a bunch of fans out there would love to pick up that book and read what's inside your mind yeah sometimes I um I I actually got pro approached when I won my second world title by a pretty big book company to write a book and um, actually started writing it, but um, it just got, at the time, was a bit too personal, a bit too touching kind of thing, or just for me, it was just too much to kind of bring out, but I think now as that time's passed, yeah, I can reflect on that and it wouldn't hit me, like I could still write exactly the same stuff, but it wouldn't have that same effect on me personally, so, you know, I have thought about it before and I've been... I talked to um, Toinsy, Phil Gallagher, once about it, and he was pretty keen to do it. And um, he would be handling the just the like the whole process and all that kind cool. of stuff. And I don't know, we just had a bit of a rough talk about it. And all right, gassed out. Actually, Kalani Latanzi, the Brazilian, coming off the bottom, big air roll spin off the top. Can he pull it off? That's where the big points come in. Is completing these maneuvers, and with these conditions, it's going to be harder to pull off these big maneuvers. A lot of frothy, a lot of bounce on the inside and unfortunately Kalani could not pull that off. Yeah. So Toinsy, uh, known for? Well he does his The Boogie magazine, um, it's a really nice book and um, and he's just, yeah we just had a bit of a rough chat about it because had, I've had a few experiences in the sport like with not just in bodyboarding but also I had a company rejected and there was a, a, like a, a pretty crazy story behind that and how it started, how it stopped okay. and all the in-betweens um, and also yeah just growing up and the boat trips and the stories and yeah and um, the world titles and the ups and the downs and all that and it is pretty it's pretty interesting to, to know that kind of stuff because you don't really the only people who know about that kind of stuff is you know three or four of my friends kind of thing at home yeah. and, and, um, and the videos too the videos only tell part well, the of the story tell nothing really the video, exactly so only, unless you're Steven Spielberg it's so hard to, to put something into a video so you know um, you know we try to do it a bit with the Joker one but even when we made the Joker one I remember the, the guy goes Jesus is too short, and, and he goes, yeah. we're not even telling the story properly in the Joker 1. And, well, with, and I with, guess words with, are a lot easier. To, with writing a book, there's no end. You can write about everything and anything. So, a nice wave coming through. We've got black, out the back. Beautiful line on the wave. He's going to go for oh, Joe Grosin bailing out right Joe's before the get up to it. wave crashes down and closes out on him. White taking a look and yellow taking a look at this wave. It looks like, yeah, yellow dropping in. Kalani Latanzi in the lead right now, building on a 1.7. Whack. Oh, oh big explosion. Yeah, so you want to see riders. I want to try and get, hit the lip early and get out in the front of the flats before it comes down because it's just hammering dudes, as you've seen in the last heat with PLC, and then you're just seeing it again there with Kalani. As we go to the replay, he's got a nice, strong line. Talk about the projection that... He's projecting, but he, I don't know, he just... 
it's just hard. The, the section was bigger down the line, and it's always harder hitting a, a, a bigger section down the line that's more powerful. Um, so that was one of the sections he's paddling out there. He'd be pretty over it because uh, there's not a lot of good waves out here. So when you get one, you want to make the most of it. Um, but, you know, um, he's sitting in first place. Ryan Hardy, he had a first in the last heat. He's sitting in second, so he won't be stressing too hard. But you've got Gastro and Joe, and they, they both they needed a good um, result for this. So We're still waiting for gas down through those uh, first away, wave. Yeah, we're still waiting for his first wave, and it's already 10 minutes into the heat. Joe Grodz in. He's trying to build on really low scores. And Ryan Hardy, he's building on a 4.9 and a 1.0 wave. He only needs a 1.35 to get that first place spot from Kalani. 35 minute heats, 15 wave maximum. Top two waves will be scored. And again, this is the leaderboard rounds. Ryan Hardy sitting in second place from Australia. Yeah, Ryan, you know, he doesn't really talk it up that much. He's actually become, become, like, he's on, in the contention to be the world champ, so he'll be sitting there tapping his fingers, watching Jeff in this contest, hoping that he uh, trips over or something happens to him so it opens up the gap for him. But um, yeah, this is a really important for him and, and another couple of people in this contest because you know, this could be a world title for Ryan Hardy and um, he's had a win at the box. He got second in Mexico. He's strong in these waves. Whenever there's swell, you can't ever underestimate him. He's got such good wave knowledge. And, um, and yeah, he's, he's, um, and he's sitting in a good spot in this contest. Yep, it's been pretty exciting tour so far and it's coming down to the wire against this guy in the black tank top, Jeff Hubbard and Ryan Hardy. They are pretty much the ones going head to head, but there are a group of riders that are also in contention. Oh, look at that board. It's, is that oh, your board? <laughs> what a weapon. Um, Jake Stone preparing, <laughs> getting ready. <laughs> Who's he videotaping? Um, I don't know, I think he's just, that's just a pretend camera, there's no battery in it. <laughs> <laughs> and the LCD's open, so it looks yeah. like he's uh, actually filming. <laughs> All right, so Ryan Hardy, really close to grab that yeah. first place spot. So um, even when I was in the drop knee competition, I, like the night before, I knew I had to make the quarters, and you know, I didn't miss. I got to bed at two o'clock in the morning. I woke up at five. I, and believe it or not, I felt a lot of the pressure. Yeah. Then, because you know, if you bomb, you lose it, and it can be so close. And it was even in that in that event. And I, and I couldn't help but thinking when I was going to sleep, I was just thinking, geez, I wonder what Jeff and Hardy and that are going through too. Exactly. I thought like, um, and back in the, like, back when I won the world title twice, both nights before I won, like. No sleep. I feces blood the night before. <laughs> didn't sleep, like wake up at four, got a couple of hours, and I know the same thing happened on Maury. And See, this is the kind of stuff we would yeah. read in your book. Yeah. And uh, by a show of hands, how many of you would buy Kingy's book? Yep, instantly. So make it a good price point, you know, nothing over 20 bucks, and uh, you'll sell millions of them. No, I wouldn't mind getting a new engine for the boat, so I might push it up to 25. <laughs> <laughs> no, All right, so, yeah. Uh, I actually thought of an idea of having an online blog book. So, like, instead of a blog, having, it like, a, um, having like 12 chapters that are a blog, oh. because everything's on the net and everything, and um, having I think, it so it's like I think a you blog can, but a book. I think you can click a button, and it, and it, and it organizes yeah. it for you. There's a few ideas. Well, how long, have you, them. <laughs> how long have you been blogging? Because I know a lot of people um, tune into your blog. Yeah, what well, is your blog first? I had a blog. Well, I've just started a new blog with Unite Boating. And, um, and big props to them, too, because they sent me to Venezuela for the drop knee comp. They were, they were really, really keen for me to um, go well in, in Venezuela. And, um, and while I'm onto it, he's been giving me a lot of crap because I never, ever mentioned him ever. So, Johnny Capilli. <laughs> Wait, I know you're out there. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Couldn't have done it without you, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, well, let's talk we... about the support crew. Uh, we know your, your family's behind you 100%. Yep. Notably for the ta past two events, I've noticed this guy, Jimbo. Yeah, Jimbo's always, um, he's always there. They got on the grog last night, though, the buggers, and kept me up. So I had to go next door and sleep sleep in, in Hardy and Winchester's room and that. But, <laughs> you know, that they feel the pressure, too. Jimmy got, Jimmy's got a video camera, and he videos most of my heats, and most of the time he forgets to even press record. Because he's just too worked up. <laughs> and I had you go to the waves. He goes, oh, mate, I couldn't even press record. I was too worked up. So, like, you know, it's, there's, there's yourself who feels a lot of it. And, like, yeah. even guys with Ryan and Jeff and Ramori and everyone, like, that's the riders who feel it. And then you've also got the support crew who's behind you, and whether that's family or friends or, you know, even guys, you know, people who love to see you surf and all the rest of it. Um, they're sitting there watching you and holding their breath and all that too. So it's kind of puts a bit of strain on yeah. people who are, who are keen to see you do well. Well, we've talked about the physical level of all these riders, I mean, including yourself, uh, diet, uh, physical yeah. training, 
And but a lot of it, uh, a lot of it is mental as well. Like, what's going through Jeff Hubbard's mind at this moment? Um, he's probably just thinking, got to loosen up this quad. Um, <laughs> no, he, he's I don't know. He's probably just trying to stay relaxed, trying not to let the pressure get to him. Um, just you know, he'd obviously have a lot of confidence behind him. He's he's weighs bloody 65 kilos, wet. <laughs> wet. Actually, he weighs double that, and he only weighs 35 when he's not wet. Um, but he's no, nah, he's, he's he's just probably just thinking, you know, give it a crack. He's put a lot of work into it. Look at his body. Like I think bodybuilders are probably the, one of the fittest athletes you can get. I think you, sometimes even you look at surfers and that, and you. I think there's a lot more impact that gets put on your body. Like even Pierre said, my back drilled after the last heat, and. I know that if you're not fit, if you don't condition yourself every day and you don't eat well and you don't do this and you don't do that, you're going to get up getting pumped and pulling a disc and, you know, it puts a lot, of, a lot of pressure on your core strength and all that kind of stuff. So look at Jeff. Jeff's one of the fittest guys you'll ever see. Like, he doesn't look muscly and he doesn't look, you know, like a, a bodybuilder, but that's not necessarily being fit at all. Like, if you're tame and you're strong and you're flexible, that's pretty good. And that's how you want to be for this sport. Well, you're in, you're on the inside uh, as well as I am, but uh, you see these guys more often than I do. The top 16, how many of them smoke cigarettes? No, none. <laughs> yeah. Perfect answer. Yeah, I, I remember with Jonesy's dad came over here and um, he, nearly, he lit up a durry, lit up a cigarette the other day in the, in the commentary in the, um, in the area where all the riders are, the VIP or whatever they call it. And... Um, and I just went, oi, oi, what are you doing? Don't light that up here. As you see Ryan Hardy taking off now. <laughs> All right, Hardy. Driving, nice, clean forward, legs grabbing back in. He's just going to look for a lip move. Oh, no. Oh. He's getting, he'll be getting the... All right, wave okay. selection, vital here, oh. Kalani oh. Latanzi. Where is he there? Oh, <laughs> you saw it coming. <laughs> you couldn't bail it. in time, and Kalani gets held up by the <laughs> lip, and you saw him go over the oh, fall. Oh, it's testing conditions out there. These guys are going to be... Oh, he's just getting biting cleaned their, up. Biting their tongue and, and um, you know. Just so what, what, still, how do you describe that in, in, you know, uh, how do you describe that? That's I'm what, talking about going under the wave. Oh, uh, that's not too bad. More more of these guys are just going to go, what the hell's going on in this heat? You know, like, if they went out and free surfed, they'd have better luck. As you see the water and white, getting his first wave after 17, how many minutes? After 12 Third, minutes. Is that right? We're looking at 35 minutes and yeah. 20 Hey, wow. so 18 half the minutes have already he passed. He's got his first wave, and it's a, it'll be a stroker for sure. So, so yeah. Anyway, I'll get back to that story about James's daddy. You know, he nearly lit up a cigarette the other day, and I thought that'd actually be a funny skit, wouldn't it? Put a wireless mic on Jane, on on an, on, a, on a dude like that no one knows, an older fellow that just smokes cigarettes, and get him to like go up and start talking to riders, and you know how they take the puff and then they start talking <laughs> and just blowing it over guys like Jeff Hubbard and yeah, all that kind of stuff yeah. because they're probably too polite to say go away or don't smoke on me and just hustling them for ages. Do it, do it, do it. I know that when I, when I have one um, light up next to me, it's just like, oh no. There's a couple of days, there's yeah. a couple of days left. <laughs> Make so, sure the video's rolling on that one because yeah. I want to see it. I might it. get Barnsley on the live cam for it. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, oh, there's um, Pierre definitely batting above his average there. <laughs> <laughs> That's his lovely lady, Ruth, who uh, travels with him. She's from Port uh, Portugal, actually, and she's, uh, she's behind the camera to give him some inside information on, on his riding and on, you know, what's going on in the water. That's just to keep him relaxed. As you see the man there with the most luck on the tour, he just goes out there and gets every good wave every time. Um, Magno, he's, he's a really good rider, really good guy. Um, there's a lot of, um, look, at, look at the vibe going on right there. <laughs> Jeff's got his back to him. We're not even talking to each other. <laughs> It gets pretty intense. I'm sure once they come in from the heat, um, there'll be a few words get said. But you know, before they go out, I'm sure they shook hands right before he uh, the camera have, went on. Yeah, there would have been a spot for a little handshake. But um, <laughs> well, know. this next heat, we're going to see David Hubbard. I mean, uh, Jeff Hubbard and David Phillips, the two Hawaiians, go against the two Brazilians, Magno Oliveira and Roberto Bruno. Whoa, did you see that? Not yeah. even a. All right, we'll uh, see well, out in the water. Well, I think Magno is going pretty good too, and he, he's up for a world title as well. I think. So, um, you know, the pressure's on him as well, and yeah, this is going to be good. I love it when they start vibing each other like this. It just turns up the heat a little bit more, and uh, I guess it's not good for them, but it's good for everyone else watching because it just makes it a little bit more intense. And you know what? It's a competition. Yeah. And um, Well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, you guys probably at home who are watching it and stuff, you kind of flick on and flick off and go and get a cup of tea or, or whatever you're doing kind of thing, but we've been on these, um, like, you know, we come over these 
to these countries and they take 40 hours, took 40 hours to get here. Oh. Three days. I'm only just getting over the jet lag now and it's a week later. Um, exactly. And it's just, you put so much into it. And then you can just get knocked out and you're just sent straight home. So guys are just coming here and it's, and it's just, you know, it all seems good probably like when you're watching on the webcast and, you know, you see the palm trees and you see the highlights and you see this and you see <laughs> that. And, but really, like, you put a lot into it. Your sponsors have paid thousands for you to come here. They expect results. You, you obviously jostling yourself around on the rankings. You, you know, it's coming down to the end of the year too, so there's a lot of pressure on everyone. And, um, and these guys are feeling it. It's all about this 30 minutes for, for a lot of these guys. Like, you know, this is the difference between staying to the competition, staying to when the crowd hits the beach, staying to when everyone claps the guy in, the champagne, the whole lot, and being involved in that, or being the dude sitting on the beach, twiddling your thumbs, giving the odd clap, and going, what am I even doing? All right, that's the title of Chapter 14 of <laughs> The Kingy, the book, coming up, uh, coming out soon, we hope. <laughs> so get your pen writing or start lazy. clicking away at the keys. And, uh, I mean, that would be an insane book. I'd love to hear some of the stories that you had. Uh, some of your trips and uh, I've heard a few but some of them I can't say online yeah, so uh, read the book usually we um I've got a boat at home and when I go home sometimes we have a um with a few of my friends and that we go out there and we have barbecues on the boat and do a bit of fishing in the river and stuff and sometimes I I tell a couple of like little stories every now and again yeah and if, if they're not by the end of it putting earplugs in their ears they usually <laughs> they, usually, they usually end up being pretty cool Oh, wow, look at this bomb just crashing down on some of the yeah. competitors. I'm I don't know if the, they've made it out in time. Well, I'm hoping the swell drops off a little bit because it's just a little bit rogue out there and, and I think it needs to um, just drop off just a little bit. And I'm in heat seven, so I'm just praying it just, you know, backs off a little bit. The swell should be on the decline, but, you know, you still see sets coming through like that. They're six to eight foot sets. And, and what you get in the camera angle here, you're getting a camera angle from a double story grandstand angle too, so. You know, whenever you're sitting high on something that looks smaller, so you can't really tell how big it is out there. Obviously, you get a perspective of it, but like, um, but it's a bit bigger than what it looks like on the camera. Interestingly enough, before I came on here, I went out the back and I heard Pete and um, all the media crew, and then I heard, um, you know, the judges and, and all that. Oh, yeah, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you don't really realise. Like, these guys are just yelling through walkie-talkies, camera one, yes. camera two, they'd be yelling right now, swifting cameras. As you see Ryan Hardy, nice high line, he's driving, puts his nose in front of his board, trying to get speed, rolls out of the top of that. So, he's moved into first place, he's just trying to strengthen his two scores. I think this is, these are the Jeez, lowest scores that we've seen really, thus far. Really I mean, uh, the riders are ahead. now starting to be very picky to make sure a lot of these waves have a shoulder on them so they can, you know, do one or two maneuvers. I pray that my heat's this low scoring. <laughs> so I mean, right now, Hardy is leading at 9.9, yeah, 4.9 and a 5.0. Yeah, it's crazy. All Kalani Latanti in yellow needs is a 5.4 for that first place spot. Yes, yeah, so, I, you know, before I came here, I just saw um, even even Chico on the head judges and stuff. He go, you got yellow, nice wave, heaps of. Wow, the Brazilian back out quickly. Here he is, he nice goes, roll off the top, us. coming left towards the rock. Reverse. Nice carve reverse off the top, coming to the inside section and goes for another high flying roll right there. Yeah. Can he pull it off? Oh. Kalani Latanzi in the yellow jersey from Brazil, your new IBA Latin America champion. Let's take another look at this, talk us through it. Yeah, he's just trying to make something out of nothing there and he does. Um, as these sections are really just top half and crumbly kind of hits the brakes, goes for a nice tight reverse there, nice cross-legged reverse. Um, it's good to see the Brazilians doing that. Um, he just lines up this next section, nice clean roll. Um, judges are looking, I like that. We don't see if he handles or not, but I'm sure the scores will tell us that. If you see the rider in white, Gastro, this is his second wave of the heat. Wow, Gastro just... The inside uh, section. What Here he goes, what? this looks clean, he might be able to get to it. I'll say he's going to try and bank a... Uh-oh. Oh, 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 harsh oh. landing right there for Gastel and Thrill heavy. from Portugal. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh. Oh, he's having a shocker out a there. Frustrating heat. And Ten he's, minutes remaining. He's had a bit of a tough, tough year this year too, Gastro, and um, and um, you know this is this is probably just another kick in the teeth for him, unfortunately. As he All right, talk us through this and tell us why this move was not completed. All right, so you can see a wedge moving in. He just passed the wedge. Maybe he would have been better off. Oh, I don't know. It's just... Okay, he's looking for the section. Maybe he goes up. 
a tad early, or I don't know. It's just a heavy section, you know. And it's just grabbing him there. He's hit the he's hit the flats, flats. He's lost a bit of speed. The wash has come over the top of him, stopped him, and just chewed him up. He's trying. He's yeah, as you see, Gastro still trying to um, paddle out there now. He's using the rip to get out there, and he's um, still doesn't give up, which is good. And he doesn't give up, and um, you know this is the Portuguese rider. I think he's the only Portuguese in the competition. I believe so, and he's uh, trying to represent here. This is the second round in the three-round leader system, leaderboard system. Joe Grodzin in the black jersey coming around the bottom, spins on the face, comes back down to the bottom, bottom turns, and it just gets all frothy and bumpy on that inside. Yeah, and because this is such a low-scoring heat and there's still 10 minutes left, like, like Joe Grodzin only needs, he's had nothing, really. Yeah, no. Gastro's had nothing either, and these guys, all they need is like a 7-5, <laughs> or 7 or an 8 point to get first, so... Like, wow, this is interesting. Very because low it's such scoring. Such a low rate. scoring heat that um, you know, this could just turn around. You could see Ryan Hardy go to fourth with a click of the fingers kind of thing, just because of how low their scores well, are. Well, we got Ryan Hardy on the outside taking a look at this one, Here dropping it. Nice style, nice bottom end turn, nice and fast. Nice pop off the off the top invert, hits the brakes, looking for another move as he rolls. Another roll, just trying to milk it now. I think that um. You know, he's probably he probably went out there with all the intentions of doing one big move, impressing the crowd, but now he's just going, geez, I'm just going to work with what I've got here, and what I've got isn't much, so just making the most of as we just go to the replay. Nice little invert for such a crappy section, and, um, you know, Hardy's not known for his grovelling, so that was good as he stalls, just lines up the next pocket. You know, you're probably sitting at home and you're probably thinking, geez, he's not really doing much, but... If you saw, if, you, if you're actually probably trying to ride these waves yourself, you probably would have just gone across the whole wave and not did anything. Yeah. Um, and just gone, oh, that was a dud wave. So for someone to do an invert and two rolls on, on a wave that most people would just go along and pull off, um, it's, it's not bad and it's good for a contest. So, you know, I've looked at these, even the highlights and stuff sometimes, and I'm going, geez, it looks like the level's pretty bad kind of thing. But when you're out there, it's pretty tough sometimes. And it's not till you actually get out there yourself and whack on a whack on a rushy and um, have a crack yourself that it's actually, you, you see how you see how hard it really is. As you see, Hardy got a 6.15 for that last score, so uh, you, that's going to extend the lead. You got something in your hands. Uh, these things are online right now for you to grab. These are uh, sick IVA products. Everybody's been asking for them, and we got some pretty cool samples. The hats, uh, we also have a cool beanie here. And uh, we also have these cool things. I wish uh, this is probably going to be the, the reason why I'm going still, to huh? get an iPhone 4. And they are cool IBA International iPhone 4 covers. And uh, we got a white and go. a black one. And yes, we are looking over. It looks like some white, uh, some live yellow. action yellow. Kalani Latanzi. Kalani. Oh. Did, did a roll with no lip. <laughs> nice and clean, though, as he does it forward. He's got a nice style, actually. He's, um, you know, he's. It's not, the waves aren't the best, so he's not really, um, he doesn't have, a, again, he doesn't have a lot to work with, but he's making the most of it, and he's not looking at too bad. You know, as I said, I was reading that Andre Agassi book, and, um, and in it, it's got winning ugly. And not that he's doing that, but, like, it's... Um, sometimes you got to do sometimes it. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And, um, and I guess a lot of people, um, and I've, I've been guilty of this myself, too, I've just kind of... Thought if I've got a win like that, I'm not going to try and win. But at the end of the day, they sometimes they're the guys who are holding the trophy. Yeah. And you're exactly. sitting on the beach. So again. hand drags and. Well, nah, not really <laughs> bad, but You don't have to win too ugly, but like. All right, um, all right. But yeah. sometimes you, what you might not normally do in a free surf session, you got to push it and you got to, you know, yeah. do it in a competition, and go against your normal principles because and that's seen, the difference between going through and not going through. We've seen that happen in Portugal where the waves were we sizable. Wilson. Joe has had some good waves. A nice. Uh -oh, right, first so, priority, Joe. Oh, look at that. So Joe is probably going to be penalised for yeah. not well, backing out Joe's of that experience way. might, or experience with the new format might cost him here, yeah. because he probably thought that he had priority. Because I don't know why he would have thought he had priority, but he obviously okay. did, I just and he heard. dropped in, so he's gone. Joe, Joe will get an inference on him for that. Okay, so cast out and through though. He was the one sitting out there the longest. He had priority. And Joe Grodzin should have straightened out or not even caught the wave mm. if he saw Gastel even look at the wave. But Joe went for it. Joe took off and uh, pretty much, in a sense, cut off Gastel and Trudeau. And now Joe is going to be uh, 
yeah, give it a penalty. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know how that's going to affect him, but we'll see it come up soon. I'd say Joe probably dropped from third to fourth. Um, and it's just, I don't know, that's a bit of a rookie mistake kind of thing. But everyone's done it. Why don't, uh, before we take off um, from the island, I want to take you to this place. This place is called Toro Verde. It's uh, up in the mountains. We got a little lull in the action. So this place was pretty awesome. I, I was fortunate enough to go with the IBA media crew, and this is what we captured. It is a, my, all right, check this out. So, Kingy, we need to get you on that. We got live action going to you right now. We'll get back to that. Gaston Drudo trying to make something in the last few minutes of this heat, and that's all she got for that wave right there. Well, I'm Gaston just going to go Andrew. back to that for a second. That looked like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, man, you got to experience that. This is uh, Toro Verde up in the <laughs> mountains. Was amazing. It was insane. It's a mile-long zip line, no and you way. do it on prone. How and, much did that cost? Uh, I'm talking to the lady right now. I'm going to try to assemble a crew to get up there again. Oh, I'll do it. I'll that is so, that looks so fun. It's like you're flying. So I'll make sure that uh, you're tuning in on that. That is the closest I've ever been to flying. I oh, mean, skydiving, yeah. I've done it. Here you you come straight down. Yeah, here's, the, here's another look at what we missed during that play. Did you see um, Kalani just looking for the section, coming straight behind it. Oh, we're Live action. Here we go. Drop in. Joe Grazin coming around the section. Come on, Joe. Oh. Wave selection. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think he's just probably Joe's. Joe's just looking at these waves and just going, these are pretty bad waves, the waves he's getting anyway. But again, he's just got to make the most of, of what he's got. Um, and sometimes you just got to get your head around it. But, you know, the, the conditions aren't the best. And um, you got to get through the heat and you got to make the most of a crappy wave. And, um, and that's hard sometimes for someone who does a lot of free surfing like what Joe would do. So, yep. um, and it, you know, it's just, that's part of the competition, I guess. It's just, you know, being able to, even, even when you're practicing before I come away to these comps, I actually try to catch crappy waves sometimes because that's the reality of a contest a lot of the time. And, um, and if you're always expecting you're going to get perfect waves and you're always expecting that you're going to get yep. perfect sections and everything's going to be easy, then yep. um, you're in dreamland because that's usually what never happens in a contest. Well, we're winding down to the last few minutes of having you here in the commentator's booth as well. So any last words, anything you want to say, the mic is yours. Uh, just keep it uh, rated PG-13. Um, I don't know. I guess just um, just like to thank my sponsors and stuff too. Um, Talk to the fans. They um, they're supporting me. Um, just everyone at home, PNBA, um, my wife, my little daughter, Sienna, um, and just, yeah, everyone. It's all good. And... Um, and just yeah, look forward to the next heat and um, see how we go. And Why are you bouncing? <laughs> I've had two coffees and I want to get out there. <laughs> All right, you're coming up next and uh, good luck. And I'm sure you're visualizing through what we're seeing too. Yeah, I can't and, wait to uh, get what, What's foamy. your strategy? What's your strategy out there? Just pick the biggest, foamiest wave I can. Just <laughs> <laughs> get, try, and, try and get a, a couple of strikers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kiki, thank you for uh, hanging out. We'll, Chill out. I mean, we still got time. Yeah. Um, quick shout out to everybody watching. Dixon in Costa Rica. Rory Mitchell in Margaret River. Thanks for tuning in. And Lucy in uh, Tenerife. Thank you all for tuning in. Benzin. As Rory, what about me? Oh, uh, Rory, I know. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, Benzin Surf and Rory, yes, thank you for Here tuning we go. in as well. Could be some action out the back. Riders going over that wave. Joe Grazin dropping in. Well, he's definitely had his fair share of waves, that's for sure. 
I don't know, Joe's, um, it looks like he's just, oh, that was a nice little double-handed Ben Serveson cutting. <laughs> yes. Keeping it alive. But, um, yeah, it just looks like he's, um, given up. And, um, you know, you should never give up. You never know, you just never know. You might as well always go to the depth, but well, obviously Joe's, Joe's behind the eight ball. had an interference. And, and that's it for me. I think I'm kicking off, and I think Tesla himself's moving on in, and, um, Two best commentators in the business are going <laughs> to go in for the next big heat of Jeff Hubbard. And well, we be, before you take off, give us a rundown. How will we end right, up? So we've got Ryan Hardy in first. He is now the main event. He'll be going man on man into the man on man heats. I'm not sure what Kalani had before this, but um, that second's going to give him four points, so that's going to push him in. Um, as we hang on, we've got Jeff Hubbard paddling in. No, nah, not yet. And then we've got Gastro. I'm not sure what he did or Jake Rodson. I know Joe got fourth in my heat. So.